The sciences education and cost benefit analysis for water and fuel production, this previous project. And assignments in the water and energy sector include the major designation water plants in the GCC countries, like Rafa in Saudi Arabia and Tarita CORO in United Arab Emirates, where Singapore integration allows developers to achieve the lowest water price in the world. Thank you for the introduction. <clears throat> Thank you all. Um, even if the title is very catchy, exotic, all the technology to develop this concept are common, commonly used in any land in the world. So, this uh, graph is showing all the reverse deposits conquer the market, and the decoupling is part of this uh, fundamental change. We are decoupling the water production from the power production. Before it was common to associate the process with convenient. Now reverse osmosis is more convenient in terms of uh, energy consumption. And in the future, only electricity will be used. And then, in the future, only renewable should be used. This is the um, graph and showing uh, the prediction, that is the orange line, and the blue one is the actual consumption. Day by day, you can find in any um, transmission operator. In, we are very good on forecasting the loads of the day after, but sometimes the, the two curves doesn't match because there is some variation on, in the renewable injection. To balance the network, we have to uh, remember that the production should match every instant the consumption. If we lose part of the production, we have to recover the part of the production with the uh, uh, spinning reserve, or maybe some power plant is not working in full capacity, and that to ramp up faster than possible to catch the load, to maintain frequency and voltage in the network. Same with renewable. Renewable can drop suddenly, and then we have to recover the energy production with the viability we have in the market. So, sometime to allow the penetration in renewable, some thermal plant should work at low efficiency point to maintain the stability of the network. This is the graph showing the production of the of the. Abu Dhabi Emirates. As you can see on the orange on the bottom is the production from the GE, who actually is only the 2.4% of the total. So it has a very limited impact and the network is very resilient. So we can accept this penetration without any trouble. But if we increase because the target is 10%, so mm, less than five times the penetration the red line, the PV, we have the duct curve. That curve has been uh, developed because it looked like a duct, developed in California, and it's showing though a big penetration of renewable as a huge impact in the profile. And you can see that the variation is fast because it's during the hours. So big thermal power plant should reduce the production suddenly to allow the penetration of the renewable. In reality, at some point, is required to cut the energy production from renewable. Usually, recently, California, for example, going back to the Dakar, is 20% here, because we cannot allow the, and we cannot manage the penetration, this penetration of renewable energy. And we are just wasting efficiency of the system. It's just we are cutting the energy that is free, is clean, because we cannot manage properly. So we need to use the energy in a rational way. This is the typical concept where a substation is distributing the energy to the consumer from the network or from a power plant. And this is very, I say, static. Power station is there and we are distributing the energy. <clears throat> the grid power plant is not an infrastructure, it's just a set of elements available, control, PLC, DCS, whatever is already available in the market, who is integrating all these uh, actors in the picture with the uh, 
forecasting, especially load forecasting will be uh, very important later. Energy price trend is a actor in the market controlling and managing the distribution of the energy in its most convenient way and the profitable way. So if you change the substation concept, the classical concept, let's say, with a, a virtual power plant which is managing an area, integrating the renewable energy, distributing the, the energy at the convenient price, this is a more efficient way to manage the renewable energy, avoiding the cutting of the clean energy we can produce. Why virtual power plant? As I say, load forecasting was a very important part of virtual power plant. If we have a, a load that we can control because the water is something that human activity needs, in a commodity that we cannot avoid to use at some point. So the main concept that we have a real water plant is managing the production and the management of the water, dispatching, storing of the water in a smart way in combination with the virtual power plant using the surplus of energy when it is available. So if we want to do an example, uh, mm, the seawater or 100,000 meter cube per day is around 15 uh, megawatt with this production 1,027 uh, megawatt hour per year of consumption. So covering 50% because we cannot oversize the, the, part, the PV plant it's the most available technology, simple to install. So let's say over 50% of the energy consumption of this plant required 43 megawatt around. And this is the profile, the annual average daily profile. And you can see the orange line and the raw consumption is constant for simplicity. At some point, if we have to optimize the, the consumption, the cell consumption, because Typically, especially in IWP scheme, the health taker doesn't want energy. They are asking you water and they want only water. So they don't care about the surplus of energy. So we are wasting all this part above the orange line because we cannot use. We cannot use the cell consumption because we are not flexible enough. So we are, this very uh, small picture, anyway, at the end we are losing 30% of energy from the PV because we cannot use that in the plant. We cannot distribute in the grid in most of the case because they will take it as a control based on water. So the idea is to implement the virtual water plant who is able to distribute the water as the virtual power plant is distributing the energy. So for example, instead of having normal storage, we can use uh, the dispatching of the water from the virtual water plant to the point uh, B when you required, when we have a surplus of energy, or maybe the owner of uh, the industrial site in the point C is predicting a shortage of water, is collecting the water when there is a surplus of energy from his own PV plant, or maybe the price of the energy is lower. For example, here we can say that producing one meter cube at 3.5 kilowatt hour per um, meter cube, we can say that we can dispatch for 0 0.5 kilowatt hour meter cube. Is, let's say just a number to make a, a simple number. So moving and producing this water is equal to store four kilowatt hour in a battery pack because we will use the, the water. So why we not produce the water when we have the energy instead of waiting the, the needs? So this is a kind of logic scheme where the virtual power plant is managing the energy from the network, distributing the surplus of energy to the network, or maybe uh, transferring to the battery bank and storage while the virtual water plant is maximizing the cell consumption in the water facilities, managing the dispatching and the production of the water, maximizing the cell consumption. Only in case the cell consumption cannot be used, it can transfer the control of this energy to the virtual power plant, who can trade the energy with the network or maybe store with the battery bank.
That is the concept. So virtual power plant can trade the energy with the other actor in the controlled area, area of influence, typically. So the virtual water plant should have the stability of the network in the steady state and in the dynamic state. For example, let's say, uh, I don't know if you can see it properly, but every building, this is a, a rim island in, in Abu Dhabi Emirates, where there are a high concentration of um, high building, for building, so um, mainly they should require, let's say, 120 meter cube per day. So the virtual water plant can uh, allow the customer to set some priority, for example, minimum level at specific time or lower price of the water. For example, the customer uh, A can say, okay, I know that uh, at 6 p.m. all people is coming back home they will take a shower, we are speaking a building of thousands of people. So the short of water will be, I don't know, at uh, uh, 6 p.m. I need the water at 6 p.m. So I will set, for example, the lower price of the water and the virtual water plant will dispatch the water at noon. At noon is capable to dispatch the water at the lower price because the energy is available, the production, and also the movement of the water is cheaper. So this flexible concept is applicable easily, implementing typical instruments like level of the, of the tank or pressure as instrument easily available now. The cell consumption should be the priority, obviously, for the single facility. I have the energy I use for my manutention. So, for example, it's a kind of logic scheme you cannot see very well, unfortunately, but if we have the um, renewable energy plant in the desalination plant, I can choose maybe to increase the production and then store in the water and dispatch into the water cosmos. Here I cannot use the surplus of energy, I can, use, I can call the virtual water plant who will manage. Let's say I can increase the production in the plant, in another plant, then I can store the water and dispatch. I can also, maybe I can shift the loads, moving the water from a reservoir to another reservoir, predicting the storage, predicting the needs in a specific reservoir. In the last scenario, if I cannot use the excess of energy, I will pass the control to the virtual power plant who can decide maybe to store the energy if possible in the battery. Obviously all these steps are required to avoid the cut of the energy. So this is a, a simulation we made where a, a seawater row with uh, five train, one in standby. Uh, standby in this case is not the proper term because if you want to apply this concept, it should be that there is a nominal water production and the production when there is a surplus of energy. So we have typically um, the train associated to the HP pump. Yesterday we saw a different concept that is really matching this, this uh, idea, this uh, concept. So if we increase the production because the irradiation, this is the irradiation passing from 500 but per square meter to 1000 maybe it was clothing and now there is the sun so we have a sudden production of energy from the TV if we are using the four train we pass from uh, consuming uh, around um, 8 megawatt let's say there passing from being a consumer of energy to a producer of energy in a very short time most of the time, we cannot do that because probably the off-taker will say, no, I don't want energy there, you have to cut that energy. But if we are able to start another train, increasing the production in the seawater law, we can see that we are really controlling the power. So at the same time, you know, the system should recognize that there is a sudden increase of energy and we have to react accordingly. So we can start the HP pump 
use the energy surplus to produce the water, and then instead of injecting in a network 6 megawatt like before, here was 6.8, we are injecting only 1.8. Obviously, we can further implement the system and use the energy in a different way. This is a simulation in an ideal case that to show that passing from T state that we are consuming the energy and then suddenly injecting to the network is not an ideal case for anyone. Not for us, not for the operator of the network. So uh, to do this concept is the difference that because uh, of yesterday because if we have big rock of a row, usually we need to be ready to suddenly start the pump. So we need the uh, full flow of the pretreatment, the low pressure loop pressurized and ready, and the arrow rack ideally pressurized. So we can start immediately, and in a very short time, we can ramp up the production of water. This is required to follow the energy uh, variation, and obviously there should be some integration with the existing plan, modification, but it's very, I say, flexible system. We have the instrument, we have the plant with a lot of controllers, a lot of uh, smart uh, instrument in the system. So at the end, I would say we should pay the bill. Obviously, <clears throat> you are saying, yes, you have to implement the system, you can increase the, the production of the water, but maybe you need a uh, further uh, reservoir, or maybe new new pumping system. But the concept should be that is uh, a market of the energy and of the water coordinating together. So the producer of the water and the consumer of the water are actively participating on the stability of the network. While now maybe the operator should keep the spinning reserve available for spending money for that, the consumer of the water can get a lower price of the water and the producer can produce the water with a lower cost, selling maybe a higher price at the same price, but spending less money. So, in this scheme, well, the two parts are participating actively in the stability of the network. Everyone is winning because the operator is spending money to control the network, but in a useful way because we are producing also water and using the clean energy without cutting the production. That's the main scope of the concept. Thank you. Maybe I was too fast. Sorry. <laughs> I was running. <laughs> So we have lots to talk about, yes. <laughs> which is really good. Uh, there was one question I did want to ask here. So you looked at the, how the the arrow can start up to consume the energy. So yes. But there's another element to it, right? And that is how distributed and how strong the infrastructure of the electricity grid is. I mean, if the if the arrow plant is far away from where the power plants are, then the sheer distribution of, uh, of electricity in the grid could be the problem. I mean, even in, in Denmark these days, when it's really windy, Germany and the rest of Europe cannot take the power. So they are paying Danish turbine owners to stop them. Because yes. otherwise the price would be negative. So, so the, the, the grid infrastructure is also going to be a, an important part of such a scheme. I don't know if you've looked at that already. Yes, uh, I would say the things we have to avoid is cutting the energy and, as you say, the negative price of the energy. That's something that should be out of the picture. So the plant and the virtual power plant, the water plant, should maintain an area the same. They should be coordinated. Maybe we have a virtual water plant, a power plant in one area controlling, and then there is another one. So uh, as you say, if you are implementing this concept in a very wide network, you can have to push. So the main concept is optimize step by step. Cell consumption, 
your your own uh, power uh, water plant should have also uh, a renewable energy plant. So you have to maximize you have to maximize the cell consumption. That's the first step. Only in the worst case scenario you can inject the power the grid where the vehicle power plant is distributing maybe to another filter water plant, increasing the production there. Obviously, the area cannot be too large because obviously when we are passing the energy to the grid, then the operator is kicking in. And the, the communication between all the network should be very well coordinated. And also, we are increasing the losses because if we are transferring the, the energy from here, the vehicle water plant, far away, like, I don't know, from Germany to Spain, you are losing a lot of benefit. So, the, the integration should be strong, but you have to limit the area of influence, because otherwise you are coming back to the same. You, the main concept is avoid to inject uh, energy out of your area of influence. That should be the key point. As long as you are managing internally, you can manage properly. Any more questions? Some more minutes? I was too fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I think I will have one more question. So, um, as I understood, there is a lot more equipment to, to do that, and how would that change? Like um, return on investment for such a plant, we just say a little bit. I say not a lot of uh, equipment, more. Maybe you have to change the concept to transfer the water. Maybe you need more smaller reservoir around, maybe close to the, uh, to the city, to the, to the district. And maybe you have to change a bit the, the compensation concept. So it requires a bit of time. It's, in my point of view, in very modern network, I would say, in Abu Dhabi, I would say, we can apply easily because everything is away. Control, etc. And speaking about uh, my village in Sardinia, I would say, I uh, require a bit of time to change and to invest. But the fact is that we have to go there, we have to use that energy. We cannot just rely on uh, the battery in the future will cover all our needs. No, we just to be smart, move the, the, the loads where we have energy. So, and the water is, is, you can store the water very easily. You cannot store the energy easily, but you can store and produce the water in a very easy way. So it's there, you produce the water and you can use after one day, and there is no issue. Why? With the energy is more complicated. But that's the main concept. You can use the existing infrastructure and just rearranging a bit. Thank you. Thank you.